Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from Rome. Pope Francis presided over an evening prayer service April 22nd honoring Christians killed under Nazism, communism, dictatorships, and terrorism. In his remarks at the service, the Pope said that the Christian church today needs believers who witness each day to the power of God's love. But it also needs the heroic witness of those who stand up to hatred, even when it means giving up their lives. During the prayer service, at which Anglican, Lutheran, and Orthodox clergy were involved, people who had been close to those honored as martyrs at the shrine spoke. Uh, Pope Francis also wore a stole that belonged to Chaldean Father Rakhid Aziz Ghani, who was murdered in Mosul, Iraq in 2007. Father Ghani stole, along with dozens of other items that belonged to men and women martyred in the 20th and 21st centuries, are on display on the side altars of the Basilica. Rome Reports has more on this unique shrine to modern martyrs. It is called St. Bartholomew on Tiber Island in Rome. It's a very special place in the center of Rome, guarded by the community of San Egidio. Its six chapels guard memories of Catholic, Protestant, and Orthodox Christians murdered for professing their faith in recent decades. For example, there are letters from Protestant pastor Paul Schneider, who was murdered for preaching the gospel in a concentration camp. There is also the rosary of Seferino Jimenez Mala, a gypsy that was killed in the Spanish Civil War. You can also see the Bible of Shabazz Bhatti, the Christian minister of Pakistan murdered for his work in favor of religious minorities. There are also relics of the Polish priest Jerzy Popolusko, who was kidnapped and murdered in 1984. Of the Latin American martyrs, Monsignor Romero's missile is preserved, and reminders of the Pastoral Posada Socampo, assassinated by drug traffickers in Mexico, can also be seen. The last memoir that is preserved is the breviary of the French priest Jacques Hamel, which is open to the final page he read before being killed in his own church by two terrorists acting on behalf of ISIS. Pope Francis will pray before them, reminding Christians that even today there are martyrs not afraid to lose their lives in order to defend their faith. Looking at news from the Vatican, on Divine Mercy Sunday, the Pope prayed the Regina Celli with those gathered in St. Peter's Square and told them that having experienced forgiveness, Christians have a duty to forgive others, giving a visible sign of God's mercy, which carries within it the peace of heart and the joy of renewed encounter with the Lord. Commemorating Divine Mercy Sunday, Pope Francis said St. John Paul II's establishment of the feast in 2000 was a beautiful intuition inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Pope said God's mercy not only opens the door of the mind, it also opens the door of the heart and paves the way for compassion toward those who are alone or marginalized because it makes them feel they are brothers and sisters and children of one father. In news from the Vatican, Pope Francis has a full schedule before his major trip to Egypt coming up at the end of the week. Rome Reports takes a look at how the Pope's week is shaping up. Pope Francis will begin the week by meeting with his Council of Cardinals. It is their 19th meeting since it was established, and they will preside over meetings from Monday to Wednesday. Pope Francis will not miss his weekly Wednesday general audience with pilgrims. The last catechesis have been devoted to reflecting on Christian hope. On Friday and Saturday, a major trip to Egypt awaits. The aim is to mobilize the Muslim world against extremism and to create bridges with Islam. During the trip, Pope Francis will address one of the oldest Christian communities, as well as meet again with Patriarch Bartholomew. Pope Francis will not rest on Sunday, as he will meet with members of Italian Catholic Action before praying the Regina Celli, which replaces the Angelus during the Easter season. Taking a closer look at the Pope's trip to Egypt, a recent Vatican briefing outlined some of the details. Pope Francis has requested a normal car be used instead of an armored vehicle. The Pope will also use a golf cart rather than an open-air Pope mobile when he visits the crowds at the Air Defense Stadium, where Mass will be held April 29th. The golf cart will also be used to greet over 1,000 seminarians, religious and clergy expected for an outdoor prayer service at the Coptic Catholic Church's St. Leo's Patriarchal Seminary. The Pope will also join Coptic Orthodox Pope Tawadros II for a visit to Saints Peter and Paul Church that was bombed in December of 2016 during a Sunday Mass. The two will lay flowers, light a candle, and have a moment of prayer for those 24 people killed and 45 who were injured. The Pope will also greet a group of children who attend a Comboni-run missionary school in Cairo and greet more than 300 young people who made a pilgrimage to Cairo to see the Pope. 
And finally in the news, three priests from the Diocese of Peoria are in the process of riding their bikes across the state of Illinois to raise awareness for vocations and show people that priesthood is a wonderful life. Father Michael Pika, Father Adam Cesarek, and Father Tom Otto are riding their bikes 350 miles across the Diocese of Peoria, the width of Illinois from April 24th through the 28th. On the way, they plan to stop at schools and parishes to encourage prayers for vocations and tell the story of their own call to priestly service. On their cycling jerseys and the t-shirts they will be handing out is a passage from Matthew's Gospel, which is providing the theme for the journey, Ask the Master of the Harvest to Send Out Laborers for His Harvest. To learn more about the ride, the route, or ways to pledge support, you can visit the website for the Peoria Diocesan Office of Priestly Vocations at comeandfollowme.org. Well, that's all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Elson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.